Do you guys remember when we talked about the May 5th Pemex slash Shell uh, oil refinery fire in Houston, Texas, technically Deer Park, Texas, right outside of Houston? Uh, we talked about it and how the, the company Shell and Pemex both said there was no issues. Nobody needed to really shelter in place. Everything was under control. Nobody was injured, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, let me give you a little update on that fire from May 5th. So according to this, several res residents in Deer Park are seeking to file lawsuits following that May 5th shell plant fire. What's interesting here, it says here, after hearing a hiss and seeing people run, some workers at last week's shell plant fire in Deer Park believe they're lucky to be alive. Investigators are still unsure what caused the massive fire at the shell plant on May 5th. The company said gas oil ignited, sending a, gig a gigantic dark plume into the air. Today, I believe, is the 17th, maybe, possibly. It's been two weeks, and they still don't know what caused that fire. I have an issue with that. You guys should as well. It says later though, listen, remember when they said it wasn't a big deal, no place around it was um, in any fear of any contamination, nothing got loose, it was just a little fire, not to worry. And I told you, always worry because they're always gonna be full of shit. There's always something you have to worry about when a refinery fire happens or anything happens at these places. Later, contaminated liquids went into the Houston Ship Channel. Since then, the, the company, county, state, and federal governments have monitored the air and water. But at the time, obviously, nothing to see here, people. Keep it moving. Just a small fire in our Pemex slash Shell refinery here in Deer Park, Texas. Not a big deal. Just massive plume in the air. Just a lot of smoke, a, a lot of fire. But no big deal. Don't even worry about it. For those of you who live really, really close, it's fine. Maybe stay indoors for a minute or two. Not a big deal. But now they're saying contaminated liquids went into the Houston ship channel. Officials said the community has never been at risk. Mm. But Carolyn Castorino, who lives near the plant, says she hasn't felt right since then. So she's had a sinus headache and that's not normal for her. She hasn't filed a lawsuit, but ABC 13 has learned that other neighbors are preparing to. You have Benny Agosto Jr., Abraham Watkins, managing partner, said he has about 30 clients preparing to file a lawsuit, three of whom have already filed. Augusto said three workers who were about a block from where the fire started suffered knee and back injuries. And I'm guessing that's from running. I don't really know if that's really something you can file a lawsuit over because you had to run. I don't know how that one works. I'm not going to lie. As they started getting away, then there was the ignition. They didn't see the ignition. They just heard it. The whoosh and the boom. And of course, now they're running for their lives, Augusto explained. The attorney said they filed the lawsuit quickly to ask a judge to preserve evidence. The cause of the fire is still unknown and investigators are unable to gain access near the site. What? Okay. Investigators are unable to gain access near the site. That to me says a whole hell of a lot, just so we're all fully aware. On its website, the company being Shell, um, the Shell Refinery Shell or Pemex, um, the company disclosed wildlife was impacted as an oiled turtle was found in a ditch. Okay. The company originally said the Wildlife Center of Texas responded. ABC 13 went to the center where employees tell us they were never called. So according to Shell, they reached out to Wildlife Center of Texas about this um, oil covered turtle. And according to ABC 13, when they went to the Wildlife Center of Texas, Wildlife Center of Texas said, mm -mm, no, no, no. Shell is lying because that's what these main corporations do. Shell then updated its website saying it was Wildlife Response Services. My bad, my bad. We got the name wrong, but we totally called somebody, right? We reached out to that company, but have yet to receive a response, according to ABC 13. It's better transparency that neighbors say they want after dealing with days of issues. There's something in the air, Castorano said. I just don't know what's going on. Shell sent ABC 13 a statement regarding the lawsuit that reads, please hold, let's read this. We are aware that a lawsuit against Shell USA Inc. and Shell Chemical LP has been filed following the Shell Deer Park Chemicals facility fire on May 5th. A total of 15 contractors were taken to the hospital and released the same day after completing precautionary medical evaluations. Shell is committed to the safety and well-being of everyone at our facilities and the surrounding communities. I hear ya. But in case you guys have forgotten, if you haven't seen that video, Shell is full of crap because the Shell petrochemical station in uh, Beaver County, Pennsylvania is currently like under investigation and being, um, are they the ones being sued by the EPA? Mm -hmm, I believe so, because they have uh, like blown past their allotment of allowed 
chemical contamination into the air in Beaver County and into the water and into the soil and things like that. They've just blown past it. Let's say they were allowed to have like a thousand whatevers. I don't know the, the measurements here. So a thousand whatevers of contamination basically released out, out of their um, refinery or whatnot uh, since November of 2022 when they opened up and went into, into business. And as of last month, uh, April, that's like six months after they opened up, they'd already like tripled what they're allowed to do within an entire year. So, so far, Shell is not doing very well in the scheme of things, literally anywhere. What's interesting is that um, on top of this happening at that Shell refinery in Deer Park, Texas on May 5th, that's the same time that we talked about that the FBI, Homeland Security, Department of Defense, and every other three-letter thing you could possibly think of happened to all be in Houston doing like routine um, exercises and, and whatnots. They don't tell you what they're doing. They're going to tell you they're going to be there so that you're not fully scared shitless when you see literally everybody and their mama in camo running around with maybe guns. Maybe there's a tank. I don't even know what they did in Houston, but it happened to be at the same time. And that's just interesting. Now, what else is interesting? Not really interesting because somebody lost their life, but one worker dead after fire breaks out at a marathon refinery in Texas. Guess where this is? Houston. Seems like we're having a lot of refinery issues in Texas, but not even just Texas, like in that little, little spot, although T Houston is not little, but in that little corner center circle of the Houston area, there's a whole lot happening at different refineries at the same time. Yes, it's been two weeks, but it's still a very short time frame to go from one oil uh, refinery, um, oil refinery fire to another one. Now, according to this, at least one worker was killed. They have not released this worker's name yet. One worker was killed after a fire broke out at a marathon petroleum oil refinery plant southeast of Houston on Monday. That was two days ago. The fire occurred at a unit um, at the oil company's Galveston Bay facility in Texas City. The Houston Chronicle reported emergency personnel responded to the fire at about 10.30 a.m. According to the newspaper, officials said the fire posed no threat to the community. Where have I heard this before? And residents did not have to shelter in place. Okay, what about the turtles? What about the ships? What about the guy who lost his life? Um, there's anyway, video from some station here showed flames and smoke coming from the unit as crews worked to contain the fire. It was unclear what caused the fire, as is always the case. Um, the television station reported the identity of the worker who was killed has not been released. It was unclear if other workers were injured. This is kind of a hard thing to see. We'll see if we can do it here. You can see right there, there's the fire happening right there. So, what I want to say here is that we are deeply saddened to report that a Marathon employee has passed away as a result of the fire today at Marathon Petroleum's Galveston Bay Refinery, the company said in a statement. We extend our deepest sympathies to our employees' family, friends, and co-workers, and our thoughts are with them as we all mourn his passing. The safety of our workers and the community is our top priority, and a full investigation will be conducted to determine the cause of the incident. A full investigation by who? That's my question. If investigators, outside investigators, still can't get into the Pemex slash Shell refinery uh, in Deer Park from May 5th, two weeks later, if they still can't get in to figure out what started that fire, who's going to investigate this one? It, it's going to be the same thing where Norfolk Southern and the Durham and East Palestine, they got to determine what happened and whatever else. No, you need third parties. You need outside parties to come in and do these investigations. Somebody who's not in your pocket, somebody who isn't, you know, funded by Vanguard or BlackRock or whoever else has their hands in these things. It needs to be a completely independent third party investigator. And if that's the case, it may be weeks and weeks and weeks. And by then they've had time to cover up whatever actually happened. Same thing, the May 5th one at the Deer Park, you're going to hear maybe in a month, they go, turns out, you know, we just couldn't figure out what it was. There was like a little leak and there was like a little switch and maybe somebody lit a match. And that's all you're ever going to get. You're never going to get the full actual story of what happened. I just want to bring that to your attention. Now, speaking of oil and gases and whatnot, let's talk about BP real fast and how the price of gasoline, um, at least from BP, is probably going to go through the roof. And let me explain why here. BP subsidiary agrees to a record $40 million penalty and pollution cutting steps at Lake Michigan refinery. Let me show you this refinery so you guys can see. This is the one near Lake Michigan, the one that's been polluting the lake for a very long time. It says here, this is according to today, this came out today. 
A BP subsidiary will pay a $40 million penalty and install technology to control releases of benzene and other contaminants at its Whiting Oil Refinery on the Indiana shoreline of Lake Michigan, the Biden administration officials said on Wednesday. The actions will settle a civil case against BP Products North America, Inc., filed by the U.S. Department of Justice and the Environmental Protection Agency, which described the penalty as the largest ever under the Clean Air Act for pollution from a structure. Additionally, the company will invest around $197 million in improvements. Before I even read the rest of this, please understand that. That's 237, no, almost $240 million they're about to come out of pocket um, to make these changes. Who's going to re like help them recoup those profits? You, them, them, me, anybody who happens to go to BP to get oil and gas or whatever at any point in time, please understand you're going to help them recoup the money they're about to spend. The settlement will result in the reduction of hundreds of tons of harmful air pollution a year, which means cleaner, healthier air for local communities, said Larry Starfield, the acting assistant administrator of EPA's Office of Enforcement and Compliance Assurance. The 134-year-old refinery, located between Hammond, Indiana, and Chicago, is the biggest in the U.S. Midwest and the sixth largest nationally. It processes about 440,000 barrels of crude oil daily, making a variety of liquid fuels and asphalt, which is why the EPA didn't shut it down when it was you know, releasing all these extra toxins into the air, because... Profit over people. Yes, there are five other like large, large uh, refineries they could have gone to, but that would have hurt. Technically, that would have hurt the consumers in the long run if you have one of them go out of business or off the rails or whatever you want to call it and stop production. We're going to feel it in our pockets. It's not them. We're going to feel it more than anybody. So they let them keep going, but they say, hey, listen, we're going to sue you, though, my guy, because you're doing too much to the environment. You're doing too much to the people who live around the area. The people around there are getting sick. There's higher rates of cancer in this area. There's higher rates of asthma in this area. And we've determined it's because of your refinery and the crap you're shooting out the top and the crap you're letting into the water and the crap you're letting into the air and into the soil and whatnot. So you need to fix it. And BP said, mm, I hear you, but until you take me to court and you win and you make me, I'm not going to do it. Now that they've won, BP's like, no, we totally, we totally want to do this to help the people in the surrounding community. We definitely want to spend $240 million for something we could have fixed numerous years ago because this building is 134 years old. But because you're making us, now we totally want to do it. It says here, it has a record of pollution rule violations reaching settlements in 2019 and 2022 over releases of sooty particulate matter linked to asthma and other respiratory diseases. A new federal complaint accused the BP unit of breaking rules limiting benzene and refinery wastewater streams and emissions of hazardous and volatile air contaminants. This all just sounds amazing, doesn't it? Under the agreement, the company will add benzene stripping equipment and take other steps intended to reduce annually reductions of cancer-causing benzene, along with hundreds of tons of other pollutants. BP will also set up 10 stations to monitor air quality outside the refinery property. The control measures will greatly <clears throat> improve air quality and reduce health impacts on the overburdened communities that surround the facility, said Todd Kim, Assistant Attorney General in the Department of Justice, Environment, and Natural Resources Division. The settlement requires court approval after a public comment period. With this new agreement, we are committing to additional robust steps, including significant capital investments to monitor and mitigate wastewater emissions at Whiting Refinery, BP spokesperson Christina Aldisho said in a statement. The improvements will be made over the next several years. Listen, unless they put a timeline in place, they're going to drag ass on the entire thing because the slower they go, the slower they have to spend the money, the longer they can hold on to their profits until... Who knows what? At some point, maybe the EPA changes their mind. Maybe they go, you know what? No, we can totally allow extra contaminants. It's not a big deal. All the people have either moved out or died because of all the current contaminants. So the area is fine. We're not worried about the air and the water near you anymore. So just go ahead and willy nilly release it. Save your money. Hold on to your profits because shareholders, we don't want to upset them, right? So there's that. Just, I just think that's interesting about what is happening with all these oil companies at the same time. Now, this is also at the same time that there is issues with coal and, and things like that. Let me 
pull this up for you real fast. I want to tell you exactly what I found here. If I can find it because I didn't save it. Sarah, um, one of my viewers, Sarah sent this to me and I know exactly where it is. If you guys give me two seconds. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read this to you because we actually talked about this mm, week or two ago when it comes to the EPA trying to stop the um, waste from the cold fire, coal fired power plants where there was an update today. And thank you, Sarah, for sending me this. Uh, I would not have seen this one today. I'd already done research for today. It says here, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, is strengthening a rule aimed at controlling and cleaning up toxic waste from coal fired power plants. A proposal announced Wednesday would require safe management of so-called coal ash dumped in areas that currently are unregulated at the federal level which also you guys need to hear means that the federal regulations are going to have a longer reach now. They're going to go farther out, which is good for your health, but where does that stop? Where does the federal reach stop? Once it's in your backyard, once it's in your house, your front yard, just something to think about because when you say, yes, please reach farther here to help protect our safety, you know, from the air and the water and the things that are being released, it gives the that gate it's like that gateway if you will to then pushing a little bit farther well how about we just uh we we put a little federal uh level regulation right over here and just like a little snippet of federal regulation right over here and then before you know it there's so much federal regulation going on that you can't even inhale or exhale without them telling you you're allowed to because of how much carbon dioxide or methane you may fart out or and carbon dioxide you may breathe out or however this works i'm just saying Take, give them, give them, what is the phrase? Give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Mm. We have to be very careful here. It says EPA Administrator Michael Reagan. I'm so tired of that man's name. Y'all even understand. I had to say it so many times for East Palestine, Ohio, and I'm not a fan of Michael Reagan based off everything we've had to talk about regarding Michael Reagan. So EPA Administrator Michael Reagan said the plan would hold polluters accountable for controlling and cleaning up coal ash, a byproduct of burning coal, in that it can pollute waterways, groundwater, drinking water, and the air. Coal ash contains contaminants such as mercury, chromium, and arsenic associated with cancer and other health problems. What's interesting is a lot of those things are added in on purpose to municipal water. Like it's already in there, I think. Not Maybe not on purpose, but there's a lot of that in municipal water. If you look up any filters, whether it's Brita, Pure, um, um, can't think of any other name right now, Berkey, there's others, Clean, Clean something. There's so many more. It'll tell you that it removes, it removes mercury, it removes lead, it's got chromium, it'll help with arsenic, with fluoride. Although fluoride being the hardest one to find a filter that actually removes it. I'm like, you can tell me you can remove lead and mercury, but that fluoride that they're, that they're purposely putting in your water is the hard one for you to figure out how to take out, which I think still is a real reason that so many people drink bottled water because it does not have the fluoride in it. So maybe they don't want you to have the ability to filter out because the bottle companies want the money. Everybody's in bed with everybody. Please understand that. Every single company, these big big players in all these games, they have a little something that they do to help each other. They're not fighting each other. They're all working together so that everybody gets some of the pie and we, we get maybe a crumb and then we get screwed over for the rest of it. But anyway, back to what we're talking about here. It says here, dun, 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 uh, ensuring the health and safety of all people is the EPA's top priority. <laughs> okay. And this proposed rule represents a crucial step towards safeguarding the air, groundwater, streams, and drinking water that communities depend on. Here's the thing. What this is going to do is it's going to give that, that inch that makes them go that mile that says, hey, we're just not going to burn coal anymore because we can't, we can't get you guys to get down to the levels that we think you need to be at with this burning of coal. You know, since we've moved our regulations out farther, you're not hitting the numbers that we want. Even if they give you, they're probably going to give them un, unrealistic numbers, honestly, so they can go, nope, you're not doing it. There goes the coal-powered plants. You're going to have to find a new way to do these things. I mean, you've got everybody talking about hydrogen over here. You're talking about um, other stuff over here because my brain is not braining today. The, there's going to be a push very, very soon to stop the coal powered plants. I'm just putting that out there. Okay. Where are we? I mean, they want to take the old coal mines. Remember we talked about this. They want to take the old abandoned coal mines and instead of turning them back into working coal mines or trying to do more or, or start new coal mines, what they want to turn those into are areas where they can put solar power and wind turbines and whatever else. I'm still keeping an eye on that with Mike DeWine and East Palestine, Ohio and those abandoned coal mines. Don't think I forgot about this, y'all. The, the thing's supposed to be in August and I'm, I'm counting down. I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, let's see here. 
Da 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 da. Where are we? If finalized, the rule would help protect underserved and minority communities already overburdened by pollution, reflecting the Biden administration's commitment to environmental justice,、uh, Reagan said. Many of these communities have been disproportionately impacted by pollution for far too long, he said, noting that power plants, chemical plants, and other large industrial sites are commonly located in poor and minority neighborhoods. The proposed rule follows an EPA proposal last week, the one we talked about, to impose new limits on greenhouse gas emissions from coal and gas fired plants.、Um, the Biden administration's most ambitious effort to roll back planet warming pollution from the power sector, the nation's second largest contributor to climate change. Because according to them, the first contributor to、um, climate change are the farts and the poo that comes out of the cows, just so we're all fully aware. The agency has also proposed rules to crack down on polluted wastewater from coal burning power plants and limit emissions of mercury and other harmful pollutants from coal fired power plants, updating standards imposed more than a decade ago. The coal ash rule follows a legal settlement between the agency and public interest groups, including the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, Sierra Club, and Clean Water Action. The group said in a lawsuit that a 2015 EPA rule on coal ash failed to regulate a large Portion of coal ash pollution in the United States. I mean, we do know that coal ash is a, is a very deadly、um, thing over time. I mean, all the coal miners who ended up with some sort of lung cancer, some sort of breathing disabilities,、uh, breathing disability, is that how that works anyway? My brain.、Um, from working in the coal mines themselves, there w a s a lot of people who got severely sick from that. So you have to assume that the coal power plants emitting all the ash, the soot, If you will, into the air that's then being breathed in by all the people who live around it, they're going to have the same negative health effects, not as quickly and not as severely as the ones who work in the places and, and were in the coal mines, I'm sure, but it's still an issue. It's still a factor, okay? And the downside is the, the, the land and the, the houses around these places are so cheap. I don't even want to say so cheap. They are cheaper than in, in areas that don't have these plants. And so, for people who are dependent or are relying on a lower income, that is their, their choice. It's either that or I don't know what the other choices are. And so, a lot of times, people are forced to live in these areas around, the,、uh, around these plants, knowing the health benefits that, or health, not benefits, the lack of health benefits. And it's kind of like a double edged sword. Either you, you have some place to live so that you and your family have a roof over your head and whatever else, but then you're next to these things that can make you and your family sick at the same time because affording something outside of the danger zone isn't in your budget at this time. And so you work and you try to get to the outside of the danger zone, but it's hard. I mean, it's hard for people everywhere right now to try to. Get a leg up to try to move a step up the ladder. You know what I mean? Anyway,、um, Earth Justice, an environmental group that represented the coalition that sued the EPA, called the new proposal a major win for communities near coal fired power plants. The revised rule extends federal coal ash regulations to most coal ash disposed at power plants and extends federal monitoring, closure, and cleanup requirements to hundreds of older landfills and dump sites that previously were excluded, the group said. This is a really big deal, said Lisa Evans, senior counsel for Earth Justice. The Biden administration is standing up for people near hazardous coal waste sites around the country. For far too long, a large portion of toxic coal ash around the U.S. was left leaching into drinking water supplies without any requirements that it be cleaned up. Let me really quickly just say I hear what this person is saying. The Biden administration is standing up for the people near hazardous coal waste sites. Technically, yes. But I don't personally think that's why the Biden administration is doing what they're doing. They're doing what they're doing so they can tick that off or、uh, mark that off their box, say, hey, we tried this. That way, in you know, another year or two, if even that long, or、uh, there's another term for Biden、um, in another four years,、uh, they can come back and go, ah, didn't do good enough. Cut, cut the coal power plants. We're done. Right? But you have to do the first step before you can do the last step. You can't just jump. You can't just jump willy nilly from no repercussions to closing it all down. You got to give them a repercussion. You got to give them a new, a, a new line they have to tow. 
And when they can't tow that line because you've either made it impossible with the numbers or you've given it too short of a time frame, or it costs way too much money for them to be able to do it, then they can come in and go, well, you know, we tried to help you. I mean, we really did. We wanted to help the people. We wanted to help the companies, but ah, unfortunately you just couldn't do it. So we're just going to have to take you out and we're moving over to our green, our clean air act, our green energy or whatever else. So it looks good from the outside that the Biden administration is doing this, but there's always, there's always something behind it. You know what I mean? It's nothing is ever really done out of the good of their hearts or whatever you want to call it. So the EPA proposal closes a loophole that allowed many power plants to avoid cleaning up the toxic mess they created. Power plants will finally lose their haul pass to leave coal ash wherever they dumped it. Based on analysis of industry data provided to the EPA, Earth Justice identified 566 landfills and ponds at 242 coal plants in 40 states that were excluded from the 2015 federal regulations. The power industry has complained about an onslaught of EPA rules aimed at the power sector. The agency's actions are designed specifically to cause the premature closure of coal power plants. Told you, said Michelle Bloodworth, president and CEO of America's Power Look. Michelle's think alike, uh, a lobbying group for industries involved in producing electricity from coal. She urged EPA to modify its proposals to avoid premature coal retirements rather than speed up retirements and jeopardize grid reliability. Mm -hmm. Coal ash storage and disposal goes back decades, but went largely unregulated until a 2008 spill at a Tennessee Valley Authority power plant in Kingston, Tennessee. A containment um, dike burst and flooding covered more than 300 acres, dumped waste into two nearby rivers, destroyed homes, and brought national attention to the issue. In 2014, an estimated 39,000 tons of coal ash spewed into the Dan River after a drainage pipe running below a waste dump collapsed at a Duke Energy plant in Eden, North Carolina. The toxic sludge turned the river gray for more than 70 miles. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound good. Now, again... You got to take everything these people say with a grain of salt, everything that it looks like that they are doing, the Biden administration or whoever else, the EPA, whatever, everything it looks like they're doing out of the goodness um, of their hearts for the American people, there's always something else to it. When they shut down the coal plants, what they're going to do is bring in the Chinese companies, the Vietnamese companies, the Norwegian companies, the Australian companies to come in and build a plant there to make hydrogen, to make whatever else. I don't even know what takes over for the coal powered stuff. I'm not even going to lie. They'll find something. They'll put some wind turbines there, some solar power. They'll throw some pipelines in there. Something is going to happen. This is just their little stepping stone. They had to, they had to get that first little step. So it looked, it looked like they were doing something good before they can really throw that whole boulder right into the middle of it all. Right. So that's my thought on that. Listen, I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow about some stuff that's going to affect the roadways here. Cause I think it's very important and kind of how it also affects your health via your food. It's really weird when you're talking about roads and food at the same time, but when they use the same ingredients, there, there's, there's a lot to be concerned about. So we'll do that tomorrow. Um, you guys, I hope you have a happy hump day, my dudes, because it is Wednesday. I'm a day off. Uh, cause Monday we didn't come back from my family in time. So I keep thinking today's Tuesday. Anyway, not the point. I love you all <laughs> have a happy rest of your Wednesday, my squirrel tribe dudes and dudettes, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.